Good morning from Panhandle Outdoors with Winston Chester. Panhandle Outdoors, your source for fishing, hunting, and information for folks who enjoy the great outdoors. Now sit back, relax. It's Panhandle Outdoors. Good morning, folks. Welcome to Panhandle Outdoors in Winston Chester. Glad you're here this Monday morning. We're getting a week started off really good with Panhandle Outdoors. We've got a great guest here in the audience. You're going to really enjoy it. And we're going to get started with our weather brought to us by Haney Technical Center at First, you know, this, this whole week's look good, but right right now it's, it's going to be 75 of high and 64 low. It's really uh, good springtime weather. I hope you had a great weekend. We'll have some pictures tomorrow, show you some of the things that everybody got to uh, take advantage of over the weekend. But let's go ahead and move on with our weather. Water temperature is still hanging there at 68 degrees. And everything's going good off the pier and, and some good, good stuff off there. Moon phase, every Monday night do a moon phase. Now we... We just started a new, just had a new moon back on Thursday on the seventh, and uh, today we're actually uh, we're in a waxing moon. Our full moon is going to be on the 21st of this month, April the 21st will be the full moon. Tide chart brought to us by Kent Forest Lawn Funeral Home and Cemetery. We get back into some good tides now. High tide at 1:10 p.m. A low tide after midnight about 12:32. Looking at our marine forecast, they call it for south southeast at about 10 to 15. All right, take a quick break. We'll be right back with our guest. Welcome back, and welcome back to a familiar face here on Panhandle Outdoors, Ken Paramore. Thank you. It's been a while. Well, glad to be back. Well, we're glad to have you. Ken's hard to track down now because this man's staying busy, and we we just realized that right off air right here that you've been retired right at one year. April 1st, uh, actually March 31st. Last year was my last day of work. So well, well, tell us, I mean. It's been a year. Tell, tell us what kind of year you've had. We're going to get to tur Turkey in a minute, but uh, this is, you've been living a good life of the retirement. It's been wide open. Uh, <laughs> What's it's all been, been going nonstop. on? It's been nonstop. I guess I felt like I need to catch up on doing things that I hadn't been able to do for 35 years. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Or as often or as frequent, I guess I should say. Oh, we started, you know, April last year, uh, turkey season. Uh-huh. I hunted just about every day. I uh, killed one bird on the very last day. <laughs> so that was a lot of hard hunting to get, you know, one bird on the last day. Then um, Memorial weekend and then June snapper season came in mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, I did quite a bit of snapper fishing. I got to fish, uh, go along on a boat that, that fished in a tournament out of Bay Point and we, we caught uh, one day we caught six fish average close to 20 pounds a piece. Didn't win, obviously didn't win it, but that's, big, that's, that's a big that's, snapper. Yeah, that's a lot of snapper. 20 pounders, yeah. Uh, you know, went rocked on through the summer. I had uh, a lot of home improvement stuff I wanted to do. And then the fall came, we went to the mountains and took in a week of the leaf change and mm -hmm. touring around through uh, the Smokies and towns in Tennessee. And, uh, and then, of course, October, November, hunting season opened. Um, I hunted just about every day that I could and when the rut came I know I went just about every day. <laughs> was able to kill two deer, um, two decent deer during the season. It was a slower season for me but uh, it was fun doing it. You know the weather, we, we had a hot winter. It just was, it was you yeah. Know, it, yeah. <clears throat> and then we, that brought us around to just about now March 19th uh, gobbler season opened back up again so. So here we are again. And I've gone every day <laughs> Other than these rainy days that we've had or, uh, you know, bad weather days, but I've gone about every day and managed to kill a bird last Tuesday morning. Well, that, that's good. We've got a picture of it coming up, but that, that's, that, the biggest thing about when I ask about your retirement, mean, you've stayed so busy. You haven't had time. Yeah, you don't awesome. realize, uh, you know, where the time goes. Yeah. And, and it's, uh, it's really nice to not have... Uh, an obligation every day, mm -hmm. you know, a place you have to be or something you have to do um, and be able to pick and choose, mm -hmm. you know, good days, particularly if you have good weather days and not have to say to somebody, you know, no, I can't go, I, I need to go to work or I've got to work today or I've got an important meeting to go to. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's, it, it took a while, but. Yeah. Well, you left out one important thing you did also. You, you got started, you were uh, driving force behind the local chapter of NWT. Oh, yeah, I forgot that. That was, yeah, uh, that was a job. Started in, I think, July. And we scrambled around, got a committee together, mm -hmm. and had some meetings and, and pulled off a banquet that won some awards um, in, in August. 
And we were skeptical at first that what kind of a draw are you going to get in the month of August? Mm -hmm. But as it worked out, we had close to 200 people at the banquet. We raised uh, 33,000 and some odd dollars in, in, you know, raffle ticket money. And mm -hmm. and uh, once we got our expenses paid, we we what we came in third in the nation for the size of the banquet, mm -hmm. uh, the net proceeds that we we cleared because we kept our expenses down. So. <clears throat> That that took up a lot of August. Yeah, yeah, it did. And you brought me this really uh, nice gift this morning, an NWTF uh, a little pocket knife. Well, that's a just knife. a yep. little token of our appreciation. You know, Gail was at the banquet, and you were, yeah. I think, fishing for kingfish. We, we, we were fishing at Sea Quarter Tournament, yep. and uh, yep. she represented me, and uh, that's very nice. Yep. I, I love her, like a one one blade knife like that. They're just strong. Well, we would like. Uh, Y'all to come to the banquet again this year. When, uh, uh, have you set a date yet? August 19th. August 19th, okay. We, <clears throat> we haven't set a location yet. There's a good possibility we'll be back at the same place. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me, but we're not sure yet. And um, we've got more time to plan. Yeah. You know, you this, ain't gonna rush through it now. No, this order. year. We, we're we going to start meeting pretty soon. Yeah, and the hardest one, I guess, will always be that first banquet you put on. And you sort of get the kinks worked out. I hope so. Yeah, I, I would think so, too. And, and plus, you, you've got a great parent organization behind you, backing you yeah. up. And I've, I've been to, like I say, you know, we talked about it before. They're just good banquets, and uh, they're a lot of fun. I had a real good regional director he, who was a paid employee yeah. by NWTF that walked us through this thing and helped us and was right by our side. So... Um, thanks to Matt Wilkins, uh, he was uh, really instrumental in helping us get going too. Okay, well, what we're going to do, we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back. We're going to talk about a typical uh, turkey hunting day. We're going to show you these pictures of uh, about four or five uh, lucky guys with these big gobblers. Be right back. All right, welcome back. Sitting here with Ken Paramore, formerly FWC law enforcement head, and now uh, just living the retired life of an outdoorsman and enjoying it. Enjoyed the, the last year. He's been, he been busy. Absolutely. Let's take a, we got some pictures. Let's go through these pictures and we're going to talk about a typical, how, how you turkey hunt and all. Let's talk about this first okay. picture we have right here. As most of you know, this is uh, Bay County Officer Dennis Palmer. And um, last Tuesday as well, he was able to bag a nice turkey. I think he said it <clears throat> had a nine and a half inch beard, about one inch spurs. All right. Um, pretty bird. That is, that's a nice bird there. Okay, that's. That's the same bird. Hanging up. And, what kind uh, of gun is that? We're gonna talk about he guns. challenged me when he sent me those pictures. Uh, what kind of gun do you think this is? And obviously it's not a camo gun, but mm -hmm. and he, I thought it was a neat picture because he hung his turkey up on an fen old fence post. And, mm -hmm. and uh, That's cool. I'm not sure if it's a Stevens or a Winchester. I'm pretty well sure it's not a Remington, but <laughs> Dennis has uh, quite a selection, so it's hard telling what he decided uh -huh. to use that day. All right. Uh, these two guys, two of our viewers, Mark Sowell and Andy Bailey, uh, working together. And a lot of times you work together with other people, too, and you call them in for each other, and I know you all do right, that, too. Right, A nice one there. Okay, tell us about this one. This, this guy was, looks familiar. <clears throat> this was my, <laughs> this was the one I got last Tuesday morning. It was a pretty incredible hunt, and um, it's my first one of the year. I hadn't killed one until Tuesday, so Are it's you been, by yourself? That day I had a buddy of mine with me that was sitting over on my right. <clears throat> I was doing the calling, and actually I had hoped that that turkey would have flanked around on his side, but the bird came in almost a dead run on my side, and mm -hmm. it was shoot him or he was going to run past. So, yeah. um, but I, I hunted pretty hard the, the first three weeks. So how, how long? How was, long you worked this bird here? That one was probably 20 minutes. About 20 minutes. Yeah. Okay. So once you heard him, he started coming on in. He, yeah, after he hung up a little bit, but yeah, he was ready. There's another familiar face. Another retiree with FWC that we're all familiar with. <laughs> Stan Kirkland. He got uh, an invite to some private property in Wakulla County. And he drove down there Tuesday morning. That's the same morning. Yeah, Tuesday was a good day for you guys. Tuesday was a good day. <laughs> and... Um, I guess to get to Wakulla to turkey hunt mm -hmm. at that hour, he'd had to leave probably home around two o'clock in the morning. But he probably did. <clears throat> he got down there and uh, set up, and I think Stan told me he worked that bird for about an hour. Wow! So that was that was a challenge to get that one to come in close. And that's his camouflage gun there. He's yep, he's using the turkey gun. Looks like 
All right. <clears throat> and this is a familiar face to me. Right. Um, my oldest son, Matthew, um, mm -hmm. that was only his second bird. And I was with him. I ended up calling that bird in for him the Sunday uh, a week ago. Uh -huh. <clears throat> we called that bird in. And that bird came in, and it was over in eight and a half minutes. No kidding. That quick. Yeah, he was. Wow. He came to the call pretty soon. But, you know, you get, I get probably as much, if not more, satisfaction now after out of calling one in for somebody and letting them do it than, true. than killing one yourself. But That's true. Uh, and we got one more. That's same a, morning, Tuesday morning. No kidding. Officer Carl Hellett, um, here in Bay County, he was able to uh, harvest that bird. So I know of uh, what, four p five, four people, five people that were able to kill turkeys on the same day. That, that that's in what, different places. That was amazing because when we <coughs> started talking about that before we came on the air. Uh, you start thinking that was different location, but it's the same morning. Same. And what it was yeah. it, it was just a few days after we had this last front pass through, mm -hmm. and the season's kind of been off off and on for me. And then that day they were they were gobbling pretty good. So, and you can go some days and don't even hear one, and uh, yeah. it makes you wonder. Yeah, but what well, tell us your typical uh, turkey <coughs> hunting day? You know, from getting up early to the days you don't hear them to the days you do hear them. What, what would be a typical day? Because you you've gone like I say every day, so I like it to be still or calm. You know, okay. with, with not a lot of wind, clear rather than cloudy. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't go in the rain because you know I don't like my calls and my gun and all that to get. Now I know some people who've killed turkeys in thunderstorms. Yeah. Um, and heard them gobble in thunderstorms and had them come in in, in the blinding rain. But mm -hmm. I just don't go when it's raining. Um, clear and cool and calm. Mm -hmm. You know, if it's windy, it's hard to hear them. It's hard to course the direction that they're in. So if it's the calmer it is, obviously, the farther, you know, you can hear. Right. Um, and then try to get there at daylight or before daylight and try to locate one. And before daylight, I use an owl call, an owl hoop. A uh, barred owl call, mm -hmm. <clears throat> and a lot of times when they're still in the tree, they'll answer that, which gives you an advantage because w once you've heard him, you can get there and try to set up close by before he flies down. Uh -huh. After <clears throat> the crows start crowing, they'll start answering crows, and I've got a crow call too, but usually the crows are active enough where they'll answer a crow and you can say, okay, he's there. Yeah. <clears throat> if you start yelping right away, there's a chance that he's gonna start coming to you and you're not set up yet because he's, you know, you imitated a turkey. If he answers a crow call, well, he, he's not gonna come to that. So you've got time to go get a blind, set up, do whatever, mm -hmm. then sit down and then when it's right, start your calling. If you, call, if you start yelping first <clears throat> and they answer, he can start coming to you while you're trying to go that way to set up and you know it, you know their eyesight is and mm. they see you they're gone they're not going to say nothing else so try to locate first and then set up and don't call too much <clears throat> hopefully you get a response if if you get a response and he gobbles you don't have to keep yelping he knows where you're at uh -huh. and <clears throat> the less you call the more he's going to want to come mm -hmm. and try, okay, where'd she go? Then he'll usually gobble on, on his own. Mm -hmm. And then you just do a little bit, and then he'll say, okay, she's right there. And next thing you know, the one I killed Tuesday, he, he when he decided it was time to come, he he came on almost a dead run. Mm -hmm. And I was afraid I was afraid he was going to run yeah. run past me, but he did stop. So Now, uh, when they're in the distance, <clears throat> they seem like they just go zigzag back and forth. But sometimes, like I say, when you get closer, they'll, they'll get, is that the what you found out? The first part of this year, the first couple of three weeks, they did what they call hang up. Mm -hmm. And I had one the other morning, I sat an hour and a half. And he did like a, a 180. He did, first he was straight in front of me, the next time he was over here, like a half moon. Wow. Then he's back over here, then he's back straight in front of me. Never would, and he's about 100 yards out, he never would come this way, he just kept doing this. And you, you'll go crazy with that. Finally, <laughs> I got up and walked off and left him there. Because <laughs> he wasn't coming. He, wa he wasn't coming. I used everything I knew to do. <laughs> I, I was going to try to get up and move and reposition, maybe thinking, 
but the woods were so open I couldn't move. So I, I was I was yeah. pinned down. So yeah. Okay. Speaking of being open all now, how how what kind of blind situation do you have? I just <clears throat> because I usually try to stay portable, and and you're moving to uh, the bird is I try to get close and find a tree and sit down next to the tree. You know, full camo. Yeah. And I just I just lean against a tree and yeah. a little cushion. Yeah. A lot of guys will go to strategic location places where, and they'll make a blind and sit there and call and one, you know, may come in. But if you hear one and you don't have a blind set anywhere, <clears throat> you don't want to run and, and try to carry all, because it's time to go, mm -hmm. you know, carry a blind and set it up. So I just go in there and find a tree and maybe get behind some brush if you can, but you also want to be able to move. Well, that's and, a big uh, thing because you got to get your gun up and, and, and... Yeah, especially when you're by yourself, you know, I usually put my gun on my knee and he, he's got to still work a call some, and I, I'm not good with a mouth call, so. Okay. So you're using a, all, all of mine is uh, friction calls, yeah, you know, slates or um, I got a little deadly push button. Um, it bought it at a tackle store on a closeout one year for five dollars. No kidding. And I That's one of your best almost, ones. It's one of my best ones. <laughs> it's just you just move your finger in it, and you don't have, and then you can just come right up to your gun. Uh -huh. And then you just, it's got a little sweet spot to it, and man, I, I don't want to leave that thing at home. Wow. And I've got a bunch of calls, but yeah. that one's, especially in close, they can't stand it. <laughs> what kind of sound does it make? Just a, just a purring, just you know, once it gets though. close, you do that purring and a slight little uh, low yelp. And like I say, that one the other day came running. Wow. It, it, was, it was a heart attack time. Right, that's amazing. <laughs> Let's take our final break. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back. So here with Ken Paramore we're talking a lot about uh, getting those big gobblers. But first, let's look at a fish and game forecast brought to us by Mark Coward of uh, Counts Realty. You're looking at 427 to 627 this morning and this evening from 456 to 656. Uh, I was going to ask you something, Ken. I saw uh, where now, most of hunting is always in the morning. But I've seen it on occasion. Some guys, I saw a big one taking like at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. Uh, about about two weeks ago is that sort of uh normal or abnormal <clears throat> a friend of mine texted me yesterday afternoon and he was behind his place over in lake city mm -hmm. five thirty in the afternoon he said there was one gobbling his head off and he no was kidding. he was going to try to get to him as soon as he got to him and set up and started calling he never heard another word yeah um my experience in late in the day you're better off to go somewhere and set up and sit yeah call about every 15 minutes because in their in their wandering they're not normally they're not going to gobble as much yeah. in the afternoons but you can kill them midday because they will respond to calls and they will show up but a lot of times they'll show up silent yeah so it's more important then to be set up already somewhere particularly where you know you've got tracks and and if you find where they've been strutting in the road and all you know they drag their wings in the sand set up close to that back off somewhere, either make a makeshift blind or sit there and be still. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> they'll respond and come to it, but a lot of times maybe you only gobble once or twice. Uh -huh. um, I haven't done a whole lot in the afternoons because they're most active. Usually by nine o'clock with me, it's time to go home. Yeah, I think most trucks are in the same way. You hear that from everybody. So. But you can kill them in the afternoon. Yeah. Now, uh, you went to, you were able to go to the National Wild Turkey Federation, their national convention, which this year was, you said, the 40th one. 40th in and, Nashville. Uh, for the 40th one in Nashville at the uh, Gaylord Opryland Convention yeah. Center. Big place, beautiful place. Um, had never been, and I'd already had tickets to go before I found out that our chapter was going to receive an award. And they called me and said, we've got an award for your chapter. Is anybody going to be here? And well, lo and behold, I had already made reservations back October, November, just because never been to one and wanted to go. Right. So I said, "Well, yeah, I'll be there." And so uh, Sarah Evans was a concert for that night in wow. the convention center. They did a, a big awards presentation. They had a big dinner, and it was pretty awesome. And the convention, of course, on the floor is all hunting-related. Uh, Umpteen zillion you know, turkey calls. You hear a lot of turkey calling going up <laughs> down the hallway. <laughs> you walk around, all you hear all day is yelping and <laughs> gobbling. And every look, every every call manufacturer I think known is is there in a booth, you know. Yeah. And then you've been to plenty of conventions. 
kind of like the Buckmasters convention on steroids. I mean, it's, it's even, it seemed bigger to me than that one. I went to that, that was another one. I went to that one in August. Yeah. <laughs> what about, uh, let, let's quickly go over to, to uh, guns and all uh, different guns people like to use. I know there's, you know, I'm sure that uh, convention has some different guns and all. So what's your, yeah, the, what's your take? And actually the gun manufacturers were there, a lot of them. And, yeah. and of course they're touting their, their turkey guns, you know, they're usually a, what, 22 to 24 inch barrel and mm -hmm. they've got turkey chokes and there's, that's another thing, there's a bazillion uh, turkey chokes on the market that you can put on them. Of course, they're camouflage and a lot of them are three and a half inch, you know, oh, magnum yeah. and three inches is the most popular. It's getting harder to find two and three quarters, it seems. Yeah. But well, well, first of all, how, how many different guns have you used for your turkey hunting in all the years? I've only used one. One gun. Um, when I was 15 years old, my grandfather taught me to turkey hunt. My dad didn't do much turkey hunting. He hunted other things, but he didn't do turkeys. My grandfather told me, I told him I wanted to get a gun and hunt, hunt turkeys with him. He said, well, go buy a shotgun with the longest barrel you can get with a full choke. So me and my mother went to J.C. Penney's <laughs> when Penny sold guns in, in, in West Palm Beach, Florida, and went into the gun department, and they didn't have a 30-inch uh, a barrel gun. So they ordered me a 30-inch full choke Remington 870, it was $156, and every turkey I've ever killed, I took that gun and I use that gun, and I don't want to leave that gun home. So I, uh, yeah. I, I'm a traditionalist, and I, I refuse to go to a turkey gun right now. Well, see, uh, that's the thing about it. You know, you know, so much commercialism to try to sell so many different things, which is, you know, that's, uh, that's America, and, and that's how people stay in business. But something like that, reliable like that, at J.C. Penney. J.C. Penney. Uh, I think we'll go to J.C. Penney and get a gun in Not anymore. That shows how, how things have You know, they had a sporting goods department and they sold guns. And, fascinating, uh, fascinating. Yep. It's well, only a two and three quarter. That's another thing. Most guys yeah. say, well, if you get a three and a half, you can shoot further. Well, they killed them for years with two and three quarter. So, yeah. you know. Well, Ken, I appreciate you taking a day off from your training. Enjoyed it. You know, I, you going again? I think you. I think you prevented me from going this morning. I know it. Maybe go tomorrow and <laughs> catch up. I will. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Enjoyed it. Folks, thank you all for watching Pan Am Outdoors. Do something good for your fellow man today, and God bless. Thanks for joining us for Panhandle on Tours with Winston Chester. Panhandle on Tours features hunting, fishing, and other activities and information to help you enjoy the great outdoors. Join us next time for Panhandle on Tours.